Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, guys, I'm, I'm totally winging this number, but I'm pretty sure it's week 19, could be 20, it's one of those. Uh, but welcome to the live recording of the Q&A at the end of my new member orientation webinar every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm gonna go to the new member channel for any questions that people have to talk, that wanna ask, we can talk about. We got a lot of people in here today. Um, please, anybody that has questions, reach out to me. If you are a non-member, you're going to have to become a member to ask questions, but um, let's kick this off. So I think we're in, uh, like I said, week 19, <laughs> it could be 20. Uh, so does anybody have any questions to start off? If you don't have questions, then I can just get into talking about some cool examples I saw today, what my thought processes was, or some of our proprietary trading strategies and what people are getting a misconception of some of them and why I want to steer you in the right direction of like what the true meanings are and things like that. So does anybody have any questions to start? By the way, what's up? What am I not talking about already right, stuff? <laughs> I'm sick in the head, man. I'm sick in the head, I'm telling you. <laughs> Mize, what's up, pal? Vanessa, hi, hi, hi. Uh, hey, Tosh, on death line setups, do you look at the first hour of the day or after 2 p.m. like some do, or it doesn't matter? Um, it, it depends, Vanessa. It depends entirely on... Uh, the volume of the day, obviously I want, I want to bury like, so like, what's a, God, were there any death line breaks recently? I'm, does anybody remember a death line break recently that was a good um, example so I can talk about it? Cause there wasn't really anything today. Um, Lethal Price, what's up buddy? Yeah, I'll show you how to log in. Uh, so AKTX, hold on Lethal Price. Let me, let me answer this one question, buddy. and I'll show you that. Um, okay. Let's see. AKTX, huh? Ah, Yes, and it kind of broke it pre-market, which was crazy, man. This thing was this thing was dead in the water, literally pre-market. So unfortunately, I don't do pre-market trading, but I mean that was the death line, like literally 260. So here's what you're gonna do. You know, if this was in the immediate morning, I am waiting on a lot of really big volume and and big candles to crash through this. Like Joe says in his trading basics videos, guys, if you have not seen this, we want a very convincing break and not only a break man because I just don't like chasing the breaks I like to wait for a pop sometimes I chase I want this candle to close and I want it to close convincingly meaning actually quite under and like this is this is perfect I want this thing to be really big I want it to be kind of like a like a death candle right like I talk about a lot so when it breaks so when anything breaks a death line, I want it to be very convincing with a lot of volume. As you can see in this candle alone, look at this box down here when I hover, 758,626 volume. That's a decent amount. That's a decent amount. 800,000 volume came out in this candle. I am going to short the next pop, in which I did. I remember this. I actually caught this move. It was nice. Um, I wish this would have popped up here, but it didn't. So to circle back and to fully answer your question, Vanessa, I like them mostly in the first hour. This is when retail is in trouble. This is when retail is trading. This is when algorithms are a little bit, not on vacation, but almost haven't woken up yet, right? Or have total, total power. I like people in control of fear. So when, when the death line happens in the first hour, I know people are panicking and I wanna know people are, not algorithms that are trying to fake me out. I want people in panic. Uh, unfortunately, every dollar made is a dollar lost. So it's not like I want people to lose money, but that's the name of the game if you're playing stocks. If, you know, shorts want longs to lose money first so they can get in, and then longs want shorts to lose money so they can get in. It's just the way of the world uh, when it comes to the stock market. But I want that convincing slam in the morning. 
I will 100% consider a death line short if it is 2 p.m. the end of day give back. Again, time stop trading. Um, we like we have several different strategies at MIC. You know, the morning um, and then the zombie hour and then the 2 p.m. give back, which Vanessa is talking about at 2 p.m. Uh, each day, which is um, God, what is that? My time. That's 12 my time, noon my time, but 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stocks that are still up like to kind of, you know, break down and give back or at least offer some scalps um, based on the time of day and what happens when people, um, you know, leave for lunch or leave for work or do this and that, blah, 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 or go back to work and not focus. Um, so I will definitely consider a death line at any given point of the day, way less during zombie times, but I like it in the first hour and I will 100% definitely take it into consideration on 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but it's got to break with some serious volume. Yes, it's got to bag long, it's always, 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 always. Uh, let's go to the MIC website. Lethal Price, what's up, brother? Go to My MIC, you're gonna click this right here, buddy, and then it's gonna prompt a login, in which case you sign in with Slack. Um, here is the workspace. For MIC is literally just, um, my investing club. Yeah, so that's the workspace for MIC. Yo, Cedric, what's up, buddy? Uh, all right, who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Yeah, AKTX was a good example. It just broke down pre market, and I never trade pre market. So even if it's breaking a death line pre market, guys, let me go back to that actually. Let me show you the thought process behind something like this for me. Um, because this was a great one. You know, I nailed it. Unfortunately, I would have size nailed it had it ran. But here's the thing, when a stock breaks down pre-market, right? So you have a stock that's not only up pre-market, you have a stock that's opening up. Pay, always pay attention to this. All right, I don't care what stock you're trading, guys. Pay attention to where the stock is opening. This is opening at 50% of its range, maybe like 55, right? There is half of the move is people underwater. So you gotta think about this. Think about this, look, I'll draw a line. Anybody who bought above 264 is underwater long. I mean, whoever's long is underwater. They're losing money. Even the chasers in three and thinking it's going to go to four and five, that is 45, 40% to 50% of the people in trouble. What do you think is going to happen when it opens? So what I want are always, 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 always two scenarios in this case. There's only two. And I'm going to show you them. And this is my secret sauce, right? Outer lines, right here. I like these. That's outer lines, right? There's two lines right there. I have three if you want to really get crazy. But there's a ton of like lines that you can put right here because this is the top, guys. This is this is the top, right? So this is the top where the consolidation was. It topped out. Think of a mountain range. It boom. There's the peak. Boom, coming down. This is the outer lines that you can scale into. So that's where I wanted to scale into. Or there's all, like I said, there's always two options, always two. Or if the stock is already weak pre-market like this is, and there's people underwater, if the opening candle is very, very, very weak, then I am going to hit the pop up to VWAP and I will scale into VWAP. So I will usually, I remember this, I nailed this. I literally top tick this one and I had orders waiting to be filled right here. Of course they didn't, but it is what it is. So everybody pay attention to this. Every day, I have two scenarios. I am waiting for it to either reach outer lines and scale this, or I'm waiting for the opening massive breakdown to hit the next pop. Does that make sense? I'm gonna try to like spell this out for you as, as simple as I can. This is teaching people how to trade, even though they're not in MIC. See, we give away too much. The point is, weak stocks, there are two scenarios for me every single day, and I usually get one of them. Every now and then, it won't. I, I promise you, it happens all the time. Every now and then, it will literally just dribble out and it won't convincingly break. It'll just, duh, 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 duh. and then I don't chase it down because then it could squeeze because this is some fucking weakness, man. I want that. I want all these guys to feel extreme pain. If it just kind of dribbles out like a little faucet that's barely working, that is not like immediate like, oh fuck, I gotta get out of the stock. That's like, okay, I'll give it a little lower, I'll give it a little lower, and then it has time to squeeze up. Sometimes, I mean, it all depends, but, and of course, if you check the daily chart on this, it's just dog shit, look at this. 
Each day it runs up, it can't hold its gains. Boom, boom, wick down. I'll remove the studies. Uh, remove all studies. Every time the stock goes up, rips down. Every time it goes up, rips down, rips down, ends red, ends red. What do you think it's gonna do when it gets, you know, back up? It's and and here's the here's simultaneously. Like when you see a daily chart like this, you're like, yeah, it's shit. But if it's you know completely front side pre-market and not breaking down yet, then you're like, oh shit, well then I gotta go to a daily chart line. Well, this is completely breaking down. So you have twofold. This is why it's an A plus setup for me. I go into the day like this. The daily chart is dog shit. Number two, pre-market's dog shit. What happens when this opens? Cat shit turns into dog shit, turns into llama shit. It's all going downhill, baby. So that's how you do it. Or at least that's how I do it. You don't have to copy my style. Everybody's got their own. Uh, let's see. I know you use three minute candles for your death candle play. Do you jump in that candle or wait for the next three minute candle or do you switch to a one minute candle? I will never look, a, and this is just a personal preference. You guys don't have to use three minutes. I will never look at a one, five, 15 minute chart. I have seen, I have like lovingly used three minute charts for the last four years only Otherwise, I'm looking at maybe a five-year chart or something just to see the daily, you know, the daily chart lines. But I'm using three minutes, and that's all I've ever needed. You know, five day, three minute, whatever. Just three minute charts, and they've worked wonders uh, for my process and what you know what I like. So you know, if you want to switch between one or three, I think you're going to drive yourself nuts. I say just get used to one and pick one. Alex uses one. I use three. Thou uses line charts. Literally, we all use different. Um, um, charts. So like if you, if me, Val and Alex were in a room, we'd all be seeing different things that correlates to our process. Alex is seeing things on the one minute I'm not seeing, and I'm probably seeing a couple things on the three he's not seeing. The point is, is just find something that's comfortable for you. But I swear to God, like the three minute, it's, it's so much less noise. Like you can't imagine. Yeah. Good job. Alex. It takes, um, when I switch from one to three, uh, I want to say it took me a solid two weeks before I was even like, dude, this is freaking Chinese. This is, this is Latin. Like, I can't understand this. I came from, you know, a couple years of one minute, but once you do get used to it, and I promise you guys, like you can get used to anything over time. I could even get used to a, a five minute if I gave myself only two months. But the point is, is three minutes works for me and it's really nice. Uh, and I love it and I'll never go back. And you want to use an odd number. Don't use two minutes. You want to use a multiplicative of like, like one, you want an odd number. So uh, definitely make sure you're not using like two and four minutes. Uh, that is, that is some of my, that's the best advice I can give you on, uh, time, you know, chart, chart timeframes. Um, how do you react off the open if it just starts moving down? Oh, I kind of just covered that MTXR. So again, it's just, if it just starts, like I said, if it just starts kind of moving down or dribbling out, I am now waiting for outer lines, or at least if it breaks down, like, here's the thing, this area is an outer line when it's here. If it breaks, dribble, 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 and it breaks down here, well, that's kind of an outer line. You see what I'm saying? You can adjust your process as you go, but the point is, is like, because here's the thing, it's like outer lines in zombie hour. Once zombie hour hits at 1030, you know, this is an outer line, or even sometimes this, you know, you're, you just don't want to, this is an outer line. So again, you, you adjust your process as you go with these flying saucer alien uh, indicators. <laughs> The alien indicator coming to you soon at an MIC warehouse. Um, let's see. Let's get back to it. Uh, Vanessa, thanks. Would you say EDNT was a possible? Oh, okay. Let's go back. EDNT. So, oh, so perfect example, guys. Per what did I do? I did exactly what I showed you on AKTX. I am going to spell my process out for you as simple as possible because I care about everybody who's here. I wanted to scale, like I said. 250 to about 270, like 272, maybe I'd give it 275, but the point is outer lines. I wanted to scale the outer lines or I wait for a massive rejection and a massive stuff and I hit the pop. There's my process. One op option A or option B. That's all there is to it, man. Everybody's like, oh, trading is this and this and blah, blah. No, dude, it's simple. Trading is not easy whatsoever because you're a human and your mind gets involved. But let me tell you how unbe unbelievably simple 
a process can entail. Because it didn't reach my outer lines, um, so plan A gets abolished, it simultaneously evolved into plan B because the criteria hit. It's, it's, a, it's not a great daily. It's not a great daily chart at all. In fact, it dog shit. It can't hold its gains ever. It breaks down every day. And pre-market's already giving up. It's at half its range. What do you think I want? Outer lines, that doesn't come. Oh, baby, what do we get? A massive rejection. That's what I'm looking for. Boom, pop. I would have scaled all the way up to probably here. I would have given some, I would have put some size on this. But unfortunately, I literally only got my starters, in which case you see right here. And that's the process. And then I'm on the phone with my trading tab. And I'm like, dude, this is going to slam red. I'm a dumb fuck for covering. And look at how much of a dumb fuck I am. <laughs> 148 did go red. So I'm just like, oh my God, I'm a huru. Uh, whatever. What are you going to do? Life goes on. Uh, <laughs> Woody Tab, what's up, brother? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, sick, man. This is the best webinar yet. Dude, I'm happy, uh, I'm happy you guys like me. So I'm hopefully getting better each week at teaching. Cedric, I love it, dude. Uh, let's see, where am I? Uh, gold, real job. Thanks, guys. Awesome. And this is a massive breakdown. Yes, I don't like weak anything, man. Here's let, let me let me really talk about this for a second. Um, uh, drawings. I'm gonna show you. Oh, what's that? What's that example that squeezed everybody the other day? Was it ASLN? Um, yes, it was. It was. I think it was this one. Let me. This is th that's a great question, John. Uh, okay, so. Oops. Sorry, trying to. Okay, who remembers ASLN? Who remembers this? The other day we had a morning uh, watch list, in which case me and Alex both wanted to short ASLN. Remember this on the three on the third day, if if it broke six fifty. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because look at this support. It's like a neckline snap pre market, right? It's almost like a death line, but it's kind of like a pre market neck snap. Um, I wouldn't say that that's the actual death line because it's hard, man. It's hard to say death line when you have a three-day multi-runner, you know, because there's so much support holding it up. But of course, you know, if you want to call that a death line, it's more of a neckline, like a neck snap at the brakes. Here's the thing. John asked a very good question. Massive breakdowns are a week open, things like that, right? I don't care if it's the open. I don't care if it's late day. I don't care if it's in the morning, middle of the day, zombie hour. If I want a breakdown, I want that shit to be massive. That is why I showed you AKTX and also EDN, uh, EDNT. I need a stock. If I'm shorting backside, of course, this was a pure frontside play on PTGX, but I'm using the outermost line I can think of, right? But if I'm playing backside, I want as massive rejection as possible. So notice, this was a good plan if it massively rejected. Dude, this thing, I remember ASLN literally broke and then immediately ripped Short's faces off. This was not the kind of breakdown I want to hit the 650 line. I wanted this thing to like careen down here, close the candle, and then like, again, I just, if I'm looking for a breakdown and then to enter after that breakdown in any shape or form, it needs to be massive. If it's weak, there's always a chance for a jump back. I'm not talking about like a teleport like this, but there's always a chance that it will tease, they'll trap you, and then rip that shit. So that was just an example that I thought of recently, in which case, if you, if you follow a weak breakdown, you're kind of fucked. Um, yeah, I'd say this is a very medium to weak breakdown. I want that shit to break down. Boom. And here's another note. I like the candles to be as, as non-wicky as possible. Does that make sense? I want this candle to be a full base. What is that? What do I mean by that? Uh, I'll try, like, like this. Like, I want it to be a full, but I don't want any wick at the bottom because wicks are a sign of reversal. So when you have like a massive wick right here to the bottom, the selling pressure, it means a reversal. It could, it's, like, it's like selling exhaustion. All the sellers got out, so it can come back the other way. Um, and that works for, again, like it, that's why it works for both sides. Why do you think I got in on the pot today on this? Dude, a wick is a sign of a reversal. This is pure panic. That's panic buys that just dump. That is panic, pure panic. If this was just a full bar, I would have been less tempted. Of course, I still would have got in, but my point is, and of course it wouldn't have been a full bar, but the point is, is this is just pure panic. 
this is like, I got in, oh shit, wrong idea, I'm out. This is people like running for the hills, man. Uh, how do you tell the transition to the backside? Well, you know, here's the thing. Let me add my study. There we go. Here's the thing. Backside is a multitude of so many things. It's under VWAP, it's bag holders, it's a stock that's very far from its highs or very far from the high of day. Um, you have lower highs, lower highs, lower highs descending. You have vol look at look at EMDP. Where'd the volume go? There's non-existent volume. So like like backside is in when there's no demand, there's an overhaul of supply. It's usually, usually, generally speaking, way under VWAP. And people have forgotten about it and it's just making new low after new low. Like the trend is broken, right? So something like PTGX. This is a great example of just pure front side. Even this is not backside to me. Like true backside. Like true backside under this is like 620, maybe like actually six dollars. Like this thing has made a gigantic move up and it's just bigger move, you know, it's just like higher low, higher low, it's getting bought up and then it breaks high a day. This is not backside. That's why I'm literally only willing to hit this once, run, and then maybe if this breaks this later on, like the ultra support for intraday, um, under 680, maybe I'd look to short. But the point is, is like true backside doesn't come in until serious levels are broke. Yeah, I switched, yep, three minutes, man, those are great. What if a stock climbs huge pre-market and then breaks down a bit and then spikes again? Uh, Chris, we, we did just talk about that. So that, that I mean, again, man, bag holders, bro. So that's, that's the perfect example. You know, ENDP or AK, oops, sorry, EN, what the fuck? EDNT. Um, this is one that, you know, this could have ran a seven and then dropped and then done something like that, right? Like, I think actually V-Ray was a good exa example yesterday. So check this. I like this question. This is actually a really good question. Remember where, a, where pay attention where a stock is, is opening up. I, I nailed this stock yesterday too. In fact, I can probably scroll back. Uh, just nail it, Bill. I didn't go any size or anything in this, but let's see. I think I definitely have it somewhere. Did I? I thought I did. Hold on one sec. I know I got this somewhere. Oh, this is still today. Hold on, I gotta go to yesterday. Am I on yesterday? Yeah, here we go. So look at look at V Ray. This was a stock that ran huge pre-market. That's a that's a pretty big run. I mean, this was actually what was this after hours yesterday? But my point is it's just a big move after hours, right? Like like non-intraday hours. This had a pretty big jump from like three, four to five sixty. The, the bigger the range, I want to go more outside orders. So I, waited, I was going to scale into the 480s. I went in a little early at 470, but I wanted to hit 480. When, basically to answer your question, bro, because I'm kind of rambling, is when a stock runs really big, I want to ideally use much outer lines. Like that's my definite number one strategy. But again, you know, if this thing death candles out the gate, I'll hit a pop if it's really weak and breaks like lines like this or a death line. But I want much outer lines specifically if there's a ton of range there or simul and or simultaneously if it is, um, uh, what was I saying? If it's up really big, if it's up really big. So like, as you can see, like E N E. DNT is not up really big. It's not up massively. So I don't, I didn't want to hit like 275 starter because I just didn't think it had, I didn't think it had the possibility to do so. You know what I mean? As simple as that. And then uh, just because I'm here, I'll show it. But again, guys, outer lines, man. Like this was an example yesterday, like OTLK, right? So this was yesterday before this big late, late, late day run. This thing was on me back. And I said, look, man, I just want outer lines. So, you know, you get in a little here. I was going to scale till here. But a po the point is, is like after zombie hours or certain hours, you got to wait for the outer lines, the outer levels, or you're going to get chopped up and squeezed and specifically because this didn't have much meat, but it was quick. I was just right there. So I figured I'd show it, but um, let's go back all the way to the new member. Oh, new member channel guys, we brought up here so people can see it better. Uh, we brought it, we changed the, the order of a couple things. So it used to be down here, but now I'm like, where the hell is it? It's up here. Uh, let's see. Toss the signal. That's awesome. Love that. 
Uh, Joe looks for the five minute candle close be, uh, below death line for confirmation. If you use three minute, do you look at the three minute candle to show, uh, to close below or check the five? I never check the five minute, Vanessa. I like the three minute. I think the three minute works well as um, good as well. I think the five minute is probably your best odds of, of you know, success, but I, I'm solid with three minutes. I think three minutes really solid. But um, again, that's just a personal preference. If you want to um, be the utmost protection and strategy for that, then definitely use the five minute. Yeah, for best odds. <laughs> Dude, I love that this is helping, guys. I love it. Oh, later, buddy. Do your work thing, man. Do the daily grind, brother, until you until you uh, either transition or just supplement. Yeah, man, it's like, dude, no rush, man. Go back to work. In fact, one of the number one things, you know, that we told traders, man, is like, if you've got a great job, man, keep that shit, man. Trade the first hour of the day and keep your career, keep your job, whatever it is, man. Even right now, dude, I have so much time on my hands. It's like, I'm always looking for like other streams of income. Why not, dude? I'm just a trader. I've got a ton of time on my hands. I'm like, there's, there's everything from Amazon FBA to looking at other things you know you could, you could you could do vlogs dude the sky's the limit man but i always say that like if trading is just your only thing if you're not stopping by like the first couple hours man you're gonna probably give back your money it's good to find a hobby it's really good to find a hobby uh yeah no problem vanessa flash what's up uh when you started trading what were your long setups you know what's so funny about that man I only had two and we teach them both now. Uh, and I found these out myself. So um, actually, I take that back. I, I had three. So the, the, if I'm remembering correctly, the only one that's worth mentioning is I just did the first bounce all the time, man. I would do this all the time. P, PTG, I, I built some accounts doing this, literally. I would, I would buy massive dips or the first bounce. This wasn't like a crazy, crazy first bounce candidate. It was good. What I would do is I'd wait for a massive move and I'd wait for a pullback to just over VWAP and scale on and under. So like literally, bro, I'd wait for this. I'd get in right there. I'd get in on VWAP and just under and it would usually give me a solid bounce. That's the first bounce. Massive move to the front side. You want a nice little drop and then boom. So the point is, is uh, basically just, I just, I built accounts on first bounce, man. And then when we created MIC, there was an actual name for it. And I was like, holy shit, I've been doing that for six fucking years. <laughs> and then, uh, and then um, the only other one worth mentioning, there are two, is the VWAP reclaim on a stock that has broken down under, but it has to, has to, has to only be a fuck you candle to shorts. I don't like this trickle up shit. You see this? This is one candle, two candle, three candle. I don't like this. This could come back down, and it did. I want a candle to blast shorts underwear off like this. I want an F you to shorts. So back in the day when I used to long, it was first bounce. Simultaneously, if it came under here and broke, and then it did a teleport candle up, shorts will be running for the mountain in trouble. Uh, so I literally, since the start of my trading career, have always, always, always gone where is the opposite side in shit your pants mode? And then I enter. So again, number one, median T. Longs are in shit the pants mode. Boom. Look at that stuff. On PG. God, what's a really good example? Um, I'm just trying to think of a really good example uh, for like a, like a, um, oh, camp. I think camp was one. Was it? I, and I'm, I'm really hesitating on like, what a really good example is. Mm, I mean, this was this is good too. I mean, like, here's the thing. That's good too, but these are the candles I'm talking about. Like, this is a 15-minute chart, but this is these are the candles I'm talking about. Like, if this was a three-minute chart and this thing just blasted, like this, this puts shorts in a bind, and, and then there's no coincidence that like these massive squeezes happen. This just squeezes everybody. Um, let's see, PT PTBX. Yeah, I mean, it did happen up here, like this big ass one. But the problem is, is, you know, it's just, it, it, it's already way above VWAP. So I would never like, I would never chase something like that. Or were you talking about, what time are you talking about? Right? It's 12.08. Uh, what time is that mine? I guess 10.08. Yeah, so, are, wait, are you talking about this candle, John? 
Dude, I'm so fucked up with time zones, man. I literally just moved from LA. I'm so fucked up with time zones, man. I'm, I'm literally like, what time does the market close again? I've been waking up 9.08 my time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, this one? Yeah, that's, that's a little, I wouldn't enter on that. That's smaller. That is, that is a good candle and it could squeeze in which it did, but uh, that is not something I would usually buy. It's got to really just, it's got to go, man. It's got to be three times. It's got to be at least twice as big as this or three times as big. So yeah, it did coincidentally do a, you know, what's the volume? The volume was coming in a little bit and it created a move and then it really came in. But I'm, I'm waiting for like this candle through VWAP. I mean, they're rare, but when it does, it'd be opposite of a death. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, for, um, uh, helping me with the terminology. If if you're waiting for the death candles to short, I'm waiting for the absolute reverse for a long. Great example. Uh, let's see if Hepa did it. I don't do these much. Oh yes, yes. Thank you, Vanessa. Yes, there it is. That I. <laughs> you know what's so funny, man? I think I actually may have long this one. I can't remember. I did a long recently, and I can't remember what it was. But that's what I'm talking about. Shorts are day if this is the day you're talking about 12 11 29 no that's actually the 27th but that's what i'm talking about so if this was under vwap and it, and it went over that would be even better but i still like even this like i may have chased this i can't remember what was the move i did where's 11 29 11 29 that's what i'm talking about yep those so i would usually wait for them so yep exactly exactly so I would wait for this to happen and then I'd get the pullback. They usually come to about 50% down or a little bit even under. And then I usually bought the dip. So that was what I did in my first couple of years. I would wait for this. And then ugh, depending on the chart, sometimes you can, sometimes you can chase. I can't remember which one I chased, but it, but it's better not to, it's better to wait for the dip at BWAP or just under like I always did. But every now and then, I'm not kidding. You can just feel it out in the moment, man. It's too hard to signify the reasoning. But I swear to God, I used to even hit sometimes things like right here. I would just be like, dude, this candle closed. It's going to keep going because it depends on the situation. It depends on, the, it depends on everything, man, even the tape. But yes, those uh, opposite of death candles. Uh, how much of a bounce are you expecting on the BWAP bounce? P PCG? Or you mean you mean PTGX or what's PCG? I didn't even look at that today. Is that a move? Is that something? That, oh, oh, PCG. First time I'm seeing it. Um, yeah, well, that's a decent blast through VWAP right there. I mean, that's not a bad example. I usually liked them a little bit bigger than that, but I mean, that really is the start of the fuck you, man. I don't like the wicks, so this is the one you're waiting for. The candle closed, but yeah, man. I mean, look at the reversal. I mean, when you when shorts are look at this. When shorts are like, oh, dude, this stock's breaking down. I'm going to follow this down. When this happens, man, all of these guys have to freaking panic out. And it's so moved that they do panic out. And they're covering here and here because it's just, it's so scary, man. You don't want to be caught in a teleport, man. Either way, if I'm short, I don't want to be caught in the teleport. If I'm long, I don't want to be caught in the dump. And I think in my you know, original career, once I discovered offerings, in the beginning of my original long career, I was like, dude, I'm never going to long again. Like, I don't want to be caught in a dump. And those things are not teleports, man. You get an offering, dude. That's, you're done if you're, you know, stuck long. Uh, PCG, yeah, that's a decent example. Are you always looking at the volume bars when trading? Yes, always. Always, always, always. Because look at this. Always pay attention to volume. It's demand. It's demand for a stock. It's, su it's literally as simple as demand. See how this really dwindled out, breaks down, and then boom. This is what you have to pay attention to. Usually when candles that, that correlate to the morning, when they kind of you know mirror the morning and look that big and stuff, it's usually a sign of a real reversal potential because real volume came in and that matches the morning. That's and then it really picks up and just all, I mean, there's no, you know, it's, it's, there's no coincidence. I mean, you just got to look at the, you got to look at the volume and say, wow, if I was short, this is, this is some real trouble, man. I, I really got to cut this short instead of adding and adding and adding to a loser and then being like, oh shit, later on when it's, when, you know, when it's, uh, when it's too late or something like that, when it's too late. Uh, what was the PTGX? What's that doing? This is just kind of based around now. I'll wait for tomorrow. There might be a day two play in this tomorrow. You know what? Let me talk about that for a second. So, or I actually already kind of did, but 
Because low hangers are not stocks that are on any kind of front side. You know, someone asked us recently if like a low hanger was like, what are you asking, CLDS? No, not CLDS. What was the one ASLM maybe? Yeah, I think it was this. He was like on day three. He was like, hey, it's a low hanger. Nah, dude, that's not a low hanger. A low hanger is a beaten down day one. Oh, there's an example of an offering. You don't want to be caught in that long, man. That's not a, that's not a teleport candle. That is teleport death. Uh, but the point is, is guys, low hangers, you are not going to treat this as a low hanger. It's not a low hanger. A low hanger is the day one move that gets destroyed and then you're shorting, you know, resistance into this. Now, technically, until this massive, you know, kind of gap up pre-market, it, it, it could have been a low hanger if it opened up down here for the day two, you know, the day one, and then you're hitting all these levels. But like, like again, you know, keep it simple, stupid, right? Like E E D N T. this is a low hanger for tomorrow. If this reaches anywhere in this area, I'm very interested. That's where the consolidation was. That's where the tops were. That's where the fail zones were. Things like that. This is a low hanger for tomorrow. So is, um, what was the, uh, shit, what was the other one that fell out of the gate? Um, I'm totally blanking here. I, I got shared for it this morning. Oh, I think it was DLPN. No, uh, DP, someone help me out here. There was another one. Ah, DLPN, thank you. Yes, this is a low hanger for tomorrow. I'm looking at probably, uh, probably near the one area. Yeah. So this is a low hanger. It's a stock of day one that was beaten down, and now it's your cherry picking. You know, it's a it's a low hanger for tomorrow. Things that are front side guys and still like making big moves or multi day runners are not low hangers. So please don't treat them as such, or you're going to get wiped out. Can't throw away these charts. I mean, but that's pretty much it, guys. Does anybody have any questions that maybe we didn't get to, or any kind of last minute stuff? Because I'm just trying to think of like I covered a lot today. I, 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 can, I can go back and read you a description of what a low hanger was. I wrote down a really good description of it that was really clear. Let me go back. Yay. Yesterday. Where did I put it? Uh. Shit, I know I put it somewhere. You know what? I'll find it in the archive. Check this. I remember it's in my archive. And this is why you need to upgrade to the archive. <laughs> my notebook. Yes, here it is. I like to keep it sim simple. I've been getting a lot of PMs on this as well. A low hanging fruit. LHF play is ideally. Pull it up like this a day one stock that has broken down big time there is a broken trend a broken chart the trend is demolished it's broken backside is in there's no question there are a ton of long bag holders day two which is the low hanging fruit opportunity the day two play is the low hanging fruit day one is usually for longs day two is typically for low hanger shorts it is the continuation play the continuation of a downtrend from day one, continuing the downtrend. That's why it's called that. The continuation of trend it's still down from broken day one. Anything after day two is at your own risk. While they can still be low to hanging fruit, day one and day two are easiest. If you're playing day three and on, that is a more of a gamble. It is up to you. I barely even play those. I don't like them. Day one, I like death lines. I like, like I showed you my strategy, our lines are a major massive fail in the beginning or a day two low hanger. And um, I've found a lot of success with, with those. So those three strategies. So again, it's just, you know, what's your comfort level and what do you like to play off? That's just my niche, you know? Microphone is low hanging, I think. <laughs> uh, MTXR, let's see. Oh, did I? Oh, shit. Can you guys hear me? Did you hear any of that shit? Oh, damn. Oh, it's, okay, what, what was the last you guys heard now? Did you hear any of this example?
Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so then I was probably rambling, and then you, okay, so you got this example, low-hanging fruit, thank God. Uh, <laughs> you're my, yeah, my microphone is definitely low-hanging fruit. Uh, I got Cox Internet. I used to have Spectrum. I was freaking Cox Internet. It's like Cox and Balls. It's terrible. Um, and, like, the guy came out and put it in my new place, and he left, and, like, two hours later, it was down, and I was like, oh, my God. I've heard a lot of people complain about Cox. So, dude, this is, I, I thank God for mobile trading, right? So if I get stuck in a position or something, but I, I got to, uh, hopefully this is not a major problem going forward, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. I'm struggling to put on a trade, like actually hitting the button, even when I see my lines. Any advice for that? Yes. Backtest MTXR. The only re there's only two reasons why you are scared to put on a trade, and this would go for anybody, because this was me, you know, way back in the day. Number one, you are not in a position to risk money. You have to get your life right first. If you are scared to pull a trigger, it is because you have not fully backtested and are comfortable with a certain setup and or simultaneously you don't necessarily have, and I'm not singling you out, I'm singling anybody out who would say this, you need to get your life right if you're in a ton of debt, if you're fighting with your girlfriend, whatever your mindset is, if your life is not right and specifically if your money is not right, if you are not in a position to risk money, it's going to be very hard to risk money in a job that risks money. So, you know, if it's, if it's literally not your mind is not right, your money is not right, or you just have not back tested enough to really say, dude, this setup comes 10 times a week and I nail it eight or nine times out of 10. It's as simple as that, brother. So figure out which one it is and I, you'll, you'll excel from there, but you've got to identify the first, the first step of, you know, healing a problem is admitting there is a problem. So now we identify and we go into, oh shit, you know, there is a problem. What is it specifically? Do I have money to risk? Am I emotionally stable in my life right now? Are you moving? Are you breaking up with your girlfriend? Are you, did your wife just cheat on you? Don't trade during these times. They're very hard. They're very taxing on a trader's mind. And hopefully nobody's wife is cheating on them. <laughs> Uh, money is just no issue, just confidence in the lines. Then yes, brother, just back test, just back test. If money is not an issue, then go into DOS, you know, paper for a little while, back test, or if you're in real money, just throw on very small size and, you know, just very small. So I don't care if it's 10 shares, just get familiar with pressing the button and just pay your commissions. Like it doesn't matter. Just, just get familiar with placing that trigger and you will get muscle memory. You'll get used to it on the setups that you know, if you've back tested enough, but you got to get some skin in the game. You've got to you just got to get in. You just got to get it. You look, I mean, um, I showed you my, my PTGX trade. I, I, I was scared on that trade. It was, it was front side. It was ETB. It was bullish. The demand was there. The volume was there. It was the hot chicken of the day, but I trusted my line. So, you know, I at least set a, a, a small size order. Like I was at least a little bit in for a scalp. The point is, is you just got to put some skin in the game. This game is so much about trust. It's crazy. Trust in your process, trust in your lines, Trust that you're going to be okay at the end of the day. Like, trust that, you know, your hard stop works. Dude, trading is, it, you got to have some trust. Anybody. I, fuck, I do. You know, Alex does. Bao does. He's got to trust his lines. You know, one of the hardest things, and Bao talks about this in his new recap, in his new uh, daily recap, is, you know, when you come back from like a holiday or Thanksgiving, when you take time off, when you go on a vacation, when you take a couple days off, whatever it is, it can be very hard, man, because you, you're kind of like, um, you need some training wheels for a day or two. You know, it's just getting back to trust. It's like, of course, I've been doing this for six years. Bao's been doing it for 16. But still, you need to be able to trust in your process, right? It's things like, man, I really, really haven't been doing this for like a week or a month or years. Some traders come back after years. You just got to trust that. You just got to trust, man. It's all about trust. I could rant on that all day. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm absolutely winded. So why don't we cut it here? And then, uh, and then I bid you adieu, but, uh, I, I hope today was good for you. Um, we'll, we'll conquer some new stuff next week, come in with some loaded questions. Uh, again, every single week I try to, you know, show trades that I think you can learn something or something that maybe I did right that I can pass on the knowledge that worked for me or just anything that I think is a good lesson I try to talk about. So again, a lot of this is redundant. I'm sure I've gone through a lot of this in other, but Hey, again, like if you learn one, one thing, right? Like it's hopefully worth it. Hey, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much for showing up.
Yeah, buddy. First resistance and death candle today. <laughs> FU candle grade. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you later. Hey, traders. This is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.